spirit is rising, she's rising, she's rising. The spirit is rising, it's rising, it's rising. The spirit is rising, they're rising, they're rising. The spirit is rising. Hi, Risa. <laughs> Hi, Amy. Hi, Kevin. Oh, listeners. Hi, flowers. Hi, little bugs. Still sleeping, but starting to awaken. Hello. Can I tell you that, you know, every winter I fear that my plum trees won't survive. Mm. And so far, fingers crossed, like every year they get these little tiny green, tiny budlets. And I'm like, oh my God, it's happening. And then... <laughs> And then like three days later, they're like leafy. They're amazing. You're amazing. You're Did you know amazing. that? You're amazing. Take You're your time. <laughs> we have all along the side of the road this year, we have this plant. I don't know its scientific name. We call it horsetail, but it starts out looking like brown asparagus. And I think in some parts of the world, it's like very delicious and sought after and eaten and it's not really eaten here but we're going to investigate it but then it turns into this like it looks like a tall green horse's tail I guess and uh and Mark was telling me it's like one of the most ancient plants still alive and they're just here they're just like hanging out by the side of the road like these many many hundreds of millions of year old plants are just like hey we still hang out we're still surviving yeah this gives me hope yeah and it, it it makes me wonder about like seasonal affective disorder and how much of that is just like you are meant to operate differently during the winter than you are during the spring summer and fall but you know our our society won't allow for that so Okay. Maybe if we could just sleep for a couple months at a time, then we could come back for millions and millions and millions of years. <laughs> yes. So this brings me to one of my personal prescriptions. This is the Missing Witches prescription. We give each other songs, ideas, spells, tools, words for how we're surviving this week right now. We hope that they offer you something, some magic, some courage, some fury, some rest as well. My prescription this week is daffodils, and I have two daffodil songs. We have these daffodils. They come back. We never planted them. Technically, I think our zone is too far north for them, or we're right on the edge. But they come back. They come back every year. They're perennials. So I was reading about perennials. So annuals. They give their whole life to make a seed, right? To make a fruit and a seed. And they hope that that seed carries on their life and then the plant dies. Perennials, they let whole parts of themselves die so that their roots can continue to live down in the dirt, under the snow, buried down. Not least of how they do it is they move water out of their cells they bring sugar into the hearts of their cells and it acts like an antifreeze keeps them from freezing and they move we don't even understand how they move the water out of their cells so that the water doesn't expand as it freezes and destroy their cells right so then they store the water outside the cells and then in the spring they slowly reabsorb it and come back to life so I just want to remind myself, and so every time I've been in the car this week, the, the Florence and the Machine song Daffodil comes on. It makes me so happy. It goes so hard. <laughs> it goes so hard. And she says, uh, I drank all the sky that I could, made myself mythical, tried to be real saw the future in the face of a daffodil. And so that's one side, I think, of the daffodil prescription. It's like drinking the sky. It's like, and then it goes so hard. It's like, <laughs> saw the future in the face of a daffodil. <laughs> so good. Yeah, uh, it goes really hard. It's like these yellow faces coming up, like insisting on the future. But then the other daffodil song is the Cranberries' Daffodil Lament, which is like 
considered by many people to be a song about suicide. But it's not that clear because she says, I have decided, I won't sing this part because I can't do it right, but I've decided to leave you forever. But then she also says, I've decided to start things from here. Thunder and lightning won't change what I'm feeling. And the daffodils look lovely today. Hey. Remember that song? No. The cranberries, no. you said? Yeah. Yeah. No. It was on, it was, I think I had two cranberries albums that I listened to over and over again. And, it, and I don't think it was a radio one because it's like a six minute song. Um, it's, a, it's sort of a real sad ramble of a song and so beautiful. But then it has this like bright moment in the middle where it's like, I've decided to leave you and I'm starting from here and the daffodils look lovely today. And it just makes me think of like shedding and like, what are we leaving behind? There's a word in French, se débarrasser. Like there isn't really quite an equivalent that has that great shaking sound in it, you know? It's like to get rid of is not quite as fun as to se débarrasser. Mm -hmm. It's like we're shaking some shit off. We're leaving some things forever. It's a slow process, you know? We've been holding our little sugars in our hearts, but now we're letting the water back in. We're letting each other back in slowly. Don't fucking rush this season. And, you know, when you need a hope for the future, look in the face of a daffodil. Of course, you've, you've given me a perfect segue for um, my prescription for this week about shedding and letting go because I wanted to bring Tanya Tagak to the prescription, of course, because I want to talk about our fundraiser and I wanted to bring in an, an Indigenous artist to this circle. Um, so I'll tell you about the song in a second, but I also brought a story about shedding. And for those of you who have read our first book, you kind of already know this story that like I, I left my hometown because something bad happened. And I basically was like, this is not my story. So I need to change this story. And I, I got right to work about making plans to change my life. you know. And I moved to Montreal. I knew one person. So I had one friend in the city and he took me to this party. I had been living in the city for maybe a month. And he took me to this party and he was like, see that woman over there? That's Tanya. She's a throat singer and she just recently worked with Bjork. And I, I met her and she wouldn't remember this. You know, I do, but she wouldn't because it was like, hi, I'm Amy. Hi, I'm Tanya. And then that was the end of the thing. But I remember being in that moment, like I'm at a party with a fucking throat singer who just finished working with Bjork. And I'm at this party and I remember having this sense of like utter validation like the universe is telling you that you did the right thing you shed what needed to be shed in order to come to this better place for you and your story and here is some validation and so I thought about that as opposed to like where I was before and what I was doing before and how that thing that happened was one of the worst things that ever happened to me. But I, I, I wasn't embittered by it. I really looked at it like this is a symptom of my life. And so I need to change my life. It was a kick in the ass. It was the ultimate kick in the ass to go and do what needed to be done. And then when I went and did what needed to be done, I got this amazing amazing message from the universe of like you are in the spot that you need to be in right now and I remember so many times in my life before that like when something cool would happen wouldn't even necessarily like rejoice I would just be like I don't deserve this or or okay well what's going to go bad now or or all of all of these negative thoughts that come you know with, with when good things happen and when bad things happen but I want everybody who's listening, like when something super rad happens, I want you to just like take a moment and be like, I'm in the right place at the right time. And this, whatever it is, this little bird that like landed just in the most pu perfect, beautiful little spot, whatever it is, like don't brush it off. Don't ignore it. 
don't try to negatorize it. <laughs> um, like say, thank you universe and keep going, keep going on that path because you're on the right path. Now, Tanya Tagak. I brought a song of experience and a song of innocence. So we'll get to innocence because I really want to start that party too. But there's a live performance that Tanya did of her song Retribution. And obviously we'll link this. It's this particular performance of it is like largely improvised. It's so heavy. And if you really just want to like sit down and, and soil and root and uh, then I recommend it. But I want to read some lyrics and remind you that our fundraiser is still going strong. Make your donation of $10 or more to the Native Women's Shelter of Montreal or to your local Native Indigenous support organization. Send us the a screenshot of the receipt and be entered to win wonderful prizes. Retribution, Tanya Tagak. Our mother grows angry. Retribution will be swift. We squander her soil and suck out her sweet black blood to burn it. We turn money into God and salivate over opportunities to crumple and crinkle, crinkle our souls for that paper, that gold. Money has spent us, left us in smog, locks in dark, room is bright, screams empty to us, left investing time, hollow philosophies to placate the fear of our bodies returning back to our mother, demand awakening. The path we have taken has rotted. Ignite, stand upright, conduct yourself like lightning because the retribution will be swift. So thank you, Tanya Tagak for being fucking rad. And then now I'm gonna absolutely switch gears because I wanna start this party. One of our coven mates said something on our, on our coven circle. Um, if you're a member of this coven, I hope you'll join us in that circle at coven.missingwitches.com. Anyway, um, they said, you know who you are, so I'm not gonna name, name your name. The broom closet is a very real thing. Um, one of our coven mates said that the, the prescription inspired them to add more joyful, upbeat music to their listening rotation, which has led to adorable family dance parties. And then later they said, dancing hasn't been super comfy for me since I was a teen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I told them, I'm going to respond to this in the prescription because I want every single person in this coven or in our, in our listening universe um, to hear what I have to say about this. Um, there's a movie called The Banger Sisters and it's super cute. And if you haven't seen it, I mean, it's not gonna change your life or anything, but it's super cute. Susan Sarandon and Goldie Hawn play these like aged out groupies. And one of them has like stayed, Goldie Hawn has stayed bartending, you know, in LA and the other one has moved to the suburbs and all her clothes are beige. And, and then Goldie Hawn shows up and woo. And Goldie Hawn is, is telling Susan Sarandon's kids about what their mom used to be like and that she would dance. And <laughs> one of the kids says, our mother? Our mother's a really, really, really bad dancer. And Goldie Hawn replies, well, that was what was so really, really, really genius about it. You didn't care what anyone thought, did you, babe? So for the prescription, I brought motherfucking cool in the gang. I brought get down on it. How are you going to do it if you really won't take a chance? By standing on the wall, get your back up off the wall and get down on it. You can be a really, really, really bad dancer. And that's what's so really, really, really genius about it. <laughs> Uh, get down on it belongs on the spring prescription that's rad I'm gonna get down it, on it all day <laughs> yeah because it's it's a song about like people who are afraid to dance yeah and cool and cool's gang as well <laughs> are are telling us like how are you gonna do it if you don't take a chance like how are you gonna do it if you don't leave your hometown when fucking horrible shit happens and move to a city where you know one person 
Yes. How are you going to do it if you really don't take a chance by standing on the wall? No, get no. your back up off the wall. <laughs> get down on it. And I, I want you to have, oh, uh, let me let me just say this one more time. I want you to have adorable family dance parties. Mm -hmm. And I want that to be a part of like re-enchanting the world. And, and, you know, my family, my spouse is gone like 14 hours a day. So my family dance parties are often me and my dog. And she's a great fucking dancer. She's <laughs> really, really, really bad at it. But that's what's so really, really, really genius. <laughs> you can have a family dance party with like, the spirits that inhabit you know your mind or your altar or your space or like actually with your kids you know our, our coven mate was saying like she could see the joy that it was bringing to her children and that was like exponentially joyful uh, you know her own joy and remembering her own childhood when she was really really genius because she didn't care what anybody thought, you know? Right, right. Just to bring it back to that previous metaphor, because I'm really stuck thinking about it, but it's like, how do we move our sugars and our waters around our body, you know, like to protect ourselves when it's cold, but also to flourish, like move to new places, let parts die, like let whole selves go, but then protect that part of yourself that's really, really, really genius and go fucking shake it somewhere where you belong, you know? I really, and it is re-enchantment magic. It really is. And I'm so glad that you brought up daffodils and I'm even gladder that I happen to have a copy of New Moon Magic sitting next to me because um, I wanted to read something that you made me think of from the chapter about the garden. Goddess painter, Global activist and Dharma gardener Mayumi Oda says, the Dharma wheel turns and turns, creating, changing every moment, yet continuing. Why do we think we are different from plants? And then we continue. The garden teaches us that we are not. Science tells us that we are not. We share 50% of our DNA with trees, 25% with daffodils. And in moments of doubt, I return to this thought. I am half tree, one quarter daffodil, and 100% witch. I mean, bless the fucking bee. And bless the fucking bee. <laughs> bee! folks, it's Risa and Amy here from Missing Witches, inviting you to get involved in our annual raffle in support of the Native Women's Shelter of Montreal and Indigenous-run nonprofits wherever you live. We have a ridiculously fun witchy heap of prizes donated by a whole community of folks joining together to make a magical wave of reparations magic. There's a prize pack from Jinx Monsoon. A one-on-one -on -one tarot session with Sarah Goddess Diener. Magic classes from Pam Grossman. A full year of writing workshops with Kate Ballou and the Bardo. Art pieces, jewelry pieces, readings, books, and so much more. Make a donation to your local Indigenous support org or the Native Women's Shelter of Montreal. And then just forward the receipt to missingwitches at gmail.com with the subject line reparations before May 31st. For every $10 you donate, you'll get one entry into the draw. Check out all the details at missingwitches.com slash reparations. And uh, bless the fucking bee. Bless the fucking bee. <laughs>